from the Instagram account of KPIX TV, a Bay Area local CBS affiliate. They say, a defiant Oakland mayor, Shang Tao, gave her first public comments on Monday following the raid on her home last week, saying she has nothing to hide and that she is not the subject of a federal investigation. So right there, she's thrown somebody else under the bus, and she did disappear for three or four days after the initial raid, which, of course, occurred only shortly after a Juneteenth parade was shot up. But she is back, and she's here to play the victim and cry and blame the right wing and all that other stuff. But my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, Hit the notification bell. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. <laughs> it would help me a lot and it would cost you nothing. But if you wanted to help me even more and spend some money, you would buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. This I know for sure because I was born poor in America. And that teaches you a lot about the world from day one. And I am your mayor. I am the mayor to call the uh, I am the mayor to all the Oaklanders who well, no you're not there's loads of people who are trying to recall you and if this doesn't work you you I hope that you will be recalled in November who work hard who are working overtime to do the right thing and to make the world a better place and no matter how hard you strive okay hang on to make the world a better place. We're talking about Oakland, California. It looks like a third world country. Bro, there is trash everywhere. The corruption is just through the roof. And you want to talk about making the world better and strive and fight. What are you talking about, lady? And push and fight and stay positive. And that you don't give up because you believe in yourself. And you know what you have to offer this world. That you just cannot catch a break. Well, guess what? I'm not going down like that. We're okay. Uh, so she, oh, she's not going down like that. We're not going down like that. She wants to be tough on one hand and pretend that she's going to, you know, fight for the little guy. But on the other hand, she's not so tough because she's crying. So which is it? And you also bring out the waterworks because you want a little bit of sympathy. And there's some other clips. They're all over the place of her quite literally blaming the right wing. I mean, nobody on the right wing has has set foot in Oakland, probably in in the political sphere, I should say, in at least a decade, if not more. And this lady, I mean, this is probably not the worst of her corruption, right? Maybe this is just the timing when people are really looking into her and they're trying to get her out the, out of there uh, as far as the recall is concerned. But this is the same lady who didn't file her paperwork to run for mayor on time but somehow still got in and was elected. This is the same lady who couldn't file the paperwork that would have granted her millions of dollars to combat retail theft, which you imagine she would have at least done and pocketed the cash and left all the retailers to, to drown anyways. This is also a lady who fired the chief of police for police misconduct while the misconduct of the actual criminals is obviously through the roof. And once again, this time from the KPIX TV Twitter account, attorney Tony Brass, who signed on to represent Oakland Mayor Shang Tao following an FBI raid at her home last week, announced Monday that he is no longer representing the mayor. Why would he do that? She's innocent. She told us that she's innocent. She couldn't convey that message to him. I mean, she's so innocent that a former chief of staff for Oakland Mayor Shang Tao said she should resign following the raid at her home. In fact, the mayor is so innocent that the former chief of staff who believes she should resign is alleging pay to play schemes. And look, Mayor Shang Tao is the talk of the town right now. Of course, we've seen huge stories in recent months, obviously in and out leaving the pizza shop getting robbed. I mean, everybody was getting robbed the bipping. Oh, but they have a, a baseball team, a minor league baseball team and a women's soccer team. That's going to save the city. That's obviously completely false, but a little walk down memory lane, if you will, because she's obviously not the only one from August, 2017, San Francisco mayor, London breed fined 22 
$22,792 for ethics violations. And I talk about this. I mean, every time I mention her name, I have to mention this fine because for whatever reason, she just kind of flies under the radar. And of course, you have to keep in mind that if London Breed is willing to admit nearly $23,000 in ethics violations fines, she probably has done much more, and she is the highest paid mayor in the country, so that's obviously a drop in the bucket for her. But this, from February 2020, San Francisco Mayor London Breed admits to past relationship with Mohamed Nuru. Now, you might be asking, who's Mohamed Nuru? He is the former San Francisco Public Works Director, and he was sentenced to seven years and federal prison. So just think about that for a brief second. San Francisco, of all places, the man who was supposed to be cleaning up the streets, the needles, the poop, the pee, the tents, he was caught taking bribes. They say Mohamed Nuru, director of SFDPW until his arrest in 2020, sentenced for bribery and kickbacks dating back to 2008. And naturally, Mayor London Breed, as his ex-girlfriend, was so she paid the $23,000 in the ethics violations fines part of which included taking gifts from him in which he gave her $5,600 to fix her car, even though, of course, she's the highest paid mayor in the country. There was also something where she was begging the former governor to get her brother off of manslaughter charges. I mean, this is a really deep rabbit hole. These people are completely awful. And, of course, a little bit more recently, San Francisco mayor defends criticism after video catches her dancing maskless at a nightclub. But don't worry, she had a good time. She was watching uh, Tony, Tony, Tony perform, and that was legendary. I had a good time at the Black Cat, and I think it's sad that um, this is even a story. Um, the fact is um, there was something that was really um, monumental that occurred, and that is Tony, 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 the original members, the brothers, Raphael Sadiq and Dwayne Wiggins, who have not performed in public for, I believe, at least over 20 years. They are just really um, some of the most incredible artists in the history of this country and the Bay Area in particular. Also, even more recently, she went incredibly viral for asking one of her mayoral contenders or opponents about naming drag queens or something. I'd like to ask Mark a question. Um, you were at the Harvey Milk uh, LGBT Democratic Club and couldn't name any um, LGBT advisors to your campaign. You were at the debate last week and couldn't name uh, any drag queens on your own. I was wondering if you this is an opportunity to redeem yourself. Uh, and if you could name three LGBTQ advisors for your campaign and three drag queens uh, in San Francisco. I mean, as the city's quite literally collapsing, right? And the mall is, everybody knows this is not new. But people are fleeing left and right in by the thousands in droves. And her concern, I guess, is to ask somebody running against her to name some drag queens I mean, who is who is that for? That's always the question, right? Like, do you think you're winning over hearts and minds? Do you think there's enough weirdo lefties who are walking over ne needles and tint and poop that care? I, I, maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's how it's gotten so bad. And another good throwback, right? Because we all know how terrible scumbag greaseball bang your wife Governor Gavin Newsom is. But all the way back in 2007, he was deeply sorry for an affair. San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom admitted on Thursday to having an affair with the wife of his former campaign manager who quit a day earlier after confronting the up and coming Democrat and the gay marriage advocate. I am deeply sorry, Newsom told reporters, admitting the affair after the San Francisco Chronicle reported that Alex Tork had resigned from Newsom's reelection campaign after his wife disclosed the romantic involvement. I uh, want to make it clear that everything you've heard and read is true. Uh, and I am deeply sorry about that. So these are the people we're dealing with. And this is the short list, obviously. The short list of people 
in California, well, I do have some New York people that have done terrible things, but this is obviously not everything terrible they've done, and this is obviously not all the terrible, po terrible politicians that we're dealing with. Another classic, I mean, the hits just keep on coming with these people, but Newsom faces backlash after attending French Laundry dinner party. And fine, if you weren't paying attention before any of this, this should really snap you out of it. I truly do not understand how anybody can be on board with these people at this point. And that's why it has become a question of the legitimacy of actually voting, right? I mean, are the apologies going to cut it? You did the you did the apology thing in 2007. Oh, I'm so sorry. Then he did another apology about this. Oh, I was a lapse in judgment. It was my, or my friend's 50th birthday or whatever. Uh, and as soon as I sat down at uh, the larger table, I realized it was a little larger group uh, than I had anticipated. Uh, and I made a bad mistake. Instead of sitting down, uh, I should have stood up and walked back, got in my car and drove back uh, to my house. Instead, I chose to sit there with my wife uh, and a number of other couples that were outside the household. Now, you can quibble about the guidelines, et cetera, et cetera, but the spirit of what I'm preaching all the time uh, was contradicted, and I got to own that. And so I want to apologize to you. Okay, bro. These are quite literally movie-level villains. And here, clear across the country in New York, and for the record, I, I just know San Francisco and New York the best. I'm sure there's corrupt politicians all over the place, but these are the ones that are constantly making headlines. They're in the news for 24, 48 hours. They go away, and they somehow get reelected. But Adam's fundraiser whose home was raided by FBI, had odd financial arrangement with campaign. And perhaps even more recently, I know people are making, th I mean, there's probably thousands of YouTube videos on this woman, but naturally, FBI investigates Dalton Village Hall amid corruption allegations about Mayor Tiffany Henyard. And I don't know how these guys, these people, they got way over their skis. They just quite literally thought they were completely untouchable, which perhaps they are. Another classic... Governor Grabass Andrew Cuomo resigns over sexual harassment allegations. And again, this is not the worst thing he's done. They just figure out a way to get rid of him and, of course, replace him with somebody who's actually more radical. And people are kind of, pre I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's actually not as bad as kickback Kathy Hochul. I still can't stand him, but some people are kind of pretending that he's not that bad because he said, oh, well, you know, if his name wasn't Trump and he wasn't running for president, then none of these charges would have been brought. If his name was not Donald Trump, and if he wasn't running for president, I'm the former AG in New York, I'm telling you that case would have never been right. brought. And that's what is offensive to people. And it should be. Which is true, but you already m eliminated thousands of people and ruined millions of lives. So you're not going to get a pass from me. And before Governor Grabass Andy Cuomo, there was Elliot Spitzer, who was probably even more of a Governor Grabass. Spitzer resigns after sex scandal pressure. So... He, back in 2008, was caught up with some high-end hookers when he was supposed to be running the entire state, which I guess you can do both. They're not mutually exclusive. But these people are just so blatant that they, I guess they think they, they're never going to get caught. And I, he technically he got caught. So did Andrew Cuomo. But they're not going to face any consequences. And last but not least, bribery fraud charges reinstated against former New York Lieutenant Governor. So his name was Brian Benjamin. For whatever reason, he kind of flew under the radar. He was kicked back Kathy's number two in command after she stepped in for Governor Grabass. And I guess he was engaged in some pay-to-play schemes, which is why we call her kickback Kathy, and she wants to pretend like she didn't know. Obviously, she knew, but it's a dirty, dirty game. And so I guess he was charged, and then the charges were dropped, but now they're back. And clearly, all of these people are completely awful. I truly do not understand how they have gained these positions of power, but we do know that these criminal politicians will almost undoubtedly breed criminal citizens.